Yes. All right, good afternoon. Happy Tuesday. How was your break? How was your break day? It was good. Thanks for asking. All right, today we're going to focus on a new strategy called lateral reading. All right, I'd like you to spend about three minutes looking at this tweet, which is on your chart that you got from the red tray. You can't see it. Look at this tweet from Twitter and tell me if this source of information is trustworthy. It's about the walkouts and gun violence. So a lot of you are doing gun violence for your projects. We're going to focus on research. So now you're looking at the tweet, and you guys are discussing, trying to talk to your group or partner, and tell me if you think this is trustworthy. Talk to each other. Two more minutes. If you have not talked to one of your partners, please talk to one of your group members. I mean, if you think this is trustworthy, is it reliable? Can you confianza? I mean, how trustworthy it is, and why do you trust it, or why do you not trust it? Come up with some reasons why you trust it or no. No, I right. Help remind us about service learning projects. I moved the due date back to next Tuesday. We have another week because tomorrow we have the PSAT. You're welcome. And today I'm teaching this lesson, so I want you to have extra time. And so what you need to have done is your Google Slides presentation it needs to be finished. Most of you shared it with me. So as you edit it, as you work on it, I'll get updates. All right. Also, the packet that you have with notes needs to be turned in by next Tuesday, a week from today. All right, tomorrow we have the PSAT. It's the first time we have this here. You guys need to try your best. Make sure you're here on time. If you're not here on time, you're going to really suffer in the reading score. It starts at, you're going to be here at 9, OK? So make sure you get a good breakfast, good night's sleep. Try your best, because colleges will look at that score, because the actual SAT is the next test. It's the actual test, right, in April. So we only have about, we have less than three months until the actual SAT. All right, so today's objective. Antonio, can you read that, please? It's up here. As what is that stand for? Students will be able to. Oh. Students will be able to use lateral reading to evaluate where information comes from in order to decide if it's a reliable source. Good, so today, later, you're going to use a laptop. You're going to practice the skill that I'm teaching you. And you're going to use it to look for an actual source. 
So that's going to be some fun involved. You get to be an investigative journalist. You guys can give them like an FBI agent, and you got to come out and tell me if it's real, if you should trust it or not. All right, today's essential question is, on the back of your tweet, please turn it over, there's a poster for you. If you guys flip it over, these are three questions you need to ask yourself today every time you do a task. All right, so you can say, who's behind the information? What's the evidence? And what do other sources say? So for example, if I tweet on Twitter or I post on Facebook, and I have to tell you that I am the best basketball player at E.H. Park High School, which is true, I am the best basketball player in this building. What are the first things that come to your mind? I heard a couple of you laugh. Why did you laugh? Why do you think it's not true? Why do you think it's not true? Why not? What, what about me thinks you What kind of evidence do you have that tells me that I would not be the best basketball player in the school? I don't wear basketball shorts. I don't wear basketball shorts. Why I teach? Yeah. That would not be professional. Oh. Any other reasons besides not wearing basketball shorts? Earlier in the year, you said that this ball happened with your ankle. Did this happen with your ankle? Oh, so Daisy was listening. She said, I hurt my ankle. If I got injured in the past, does that make me, you don't feel like I healed from my injury? Yeah, but like, you're scared. All right, so what other questions do you have? Looking at your poster, <laughs> I'm scared to hurt my ankle again. That's a good point. What else would you ask? If I say I'm the best basketball player, I'm the best shooter, I'm the best at driving, I'm the best passer, I have a crossover dribble that none of you can guard, nobody in this building can guard. <laughs> I will break your ankle. One time I scored almost 80% of the points of my team's points in one game. Twice, actually. One time I lost. And which of those questions you know, do you use to prove that he's not reliable? So what do you think? What else would you have to do to prove me wrong? Or believe me? <coughs> Any ideas? Good point. You've never seen me play. So if you ask me, what am I going to say? Of course you're going to say you're good. Of course I'm going to say I'm good, right? But nobody's seen me play. So has anybody seen me play here? No. You saw me shoot, but you never seen me play. She saw me shoot in pants. And, and work shoes, and I miss, but you know, half, you know, even the best players in the NBA miss half their shot. You're probably the best player in the room. Nope. I agree with Mark. Marco. All right, so if, if, I, if you have to, what else would you do to find out if you've never seen me play, what would you have to do? Ask questions, ask other people. Ask other people, good. Specifically, which people? Smart people. People that played. People that played. Basketball with me, right? Should I ask his mom? No. Why not? Yeah. I mean, you can just be like, yeah, you're good. That's your mom. That's a good point. But my mom used to come out of game and say, you so <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. You can ask my friend, but if you ask my mom, she's going to be biased, right? She's going to say, yes, he's really good. All right. What else would you want? Number two. To play ourselves. We have to play us ourselves. You want to play one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah. What time? Alright, right now? Sure. Let's go with the gym. I'll play you in these boots. So you need evidence, right? You can play me one-on-one. -on -one. And then last, you need to ask other people. So in the same way, you guys have to look online. If I go on Twitter, if I read that person's Twitter page and their profile, am I going to learn if they're, if they're credible, if they're trustworthy? No. No, why not? Because it's what? If I read their profile that they wrote, why would I not read it? Could be 50-50, but when I stay on their page to find out if they're right, yeah. I would. I heard a no, why not? All right, so we're gonna talk about this. So we need, what information do we need about an organization or an author to help us decide if they're trustworthy? And this is uh, happening a lot in our country, especially with the big election coming up November 3rd. You guys can earn 230 bucks March 17th to see who decides to run for president? Who's going to play against Donald Trump in the next election? There's going to be a lot of news out there that you're not going to tell me if it's true. It's hard to tell if it's true, if it's false, or if they're making stuff up. So we have to find out perspective, right? We have to go to the sponsoring organization. Like, who's paying for this? Who is the bankrolling this website? All right. Who wrote this article? Who do they work for? So you got to start asking questions. you got to dig deeper, right? So would an oil company like BP would they be likely to sponsor an article or an ad about solar panels? Yeah. No. Why not? Amendra? Because. And then Xavier? <coughs> Why not? 
So what? So BP pay for that? No. No, because BP makes what? Oil. Oil. So they're not going to put out ads that say, hey, let's get renewable energy, let's get some more windows, let's get some solar panels. Right? So you have to think about that. They're paying for people to buy more what? Oil. Oil. They want people to buy more gas. So what are they going to promote? Oil. Oil. And cars, right? So they're going to be focused on that. They're not going to do anything else. So you think about what is the perspective of the website or the company that's paying for it? Next thing you think about in your notes, you can write a couple of these things down. So write down sponsor in your notes. Perspective, sponsor. So think about who's paying for it. It's a sponsor, right? So just a couple words, don't write the whole sentence. If you think about perspective, that's a very important thing. To have empathy, right? Where is that person coming from? What is their agenda? What is their plan? What are they? What's their motivation? All right. Next word is expertise or authority. Sponsor. Perspective. Expertise. Are they an expert on the subject? Are they an authority on the topic? Are they copying all of us down? No, just the whole word. So. Just, I want you to think about it. I don't want you to get lost in the writing. No necesitas escribir todo. Just solo las palabras. Bulldoze. <laughs> All right. So, for example, would we listen to a dentist recommending a new toothpaste? Yes. Yeah. Why? Because they're dentists and they got their. Yeah, they're experts. They're experts, right? <laughs> they're a dentist and they got their. <laughs> doctor in dentistry, right? They went to like eight years of college to be dentist. What about a doctor suggesting a new multivitamin? Would you trust a doctor? Yeah. No? A multivitamin. It's like you take one multivitamin, it has like 10 vitamins in it. It makes you feel good, it makes you healthy if you're missing those foods. Yeah. So you trust a doctor, right? Yeah. They're, they're an expert on health. All right, so that means you got to think about is there an expert? Are they an authority on the topic? Expert. Can I do that? So think about, are they experts? All right, so I'm not gonna go through all of this, but we have journalists, professional journalists, I would write down the word journalists. Every website hires journalists, and they have to use facts. Necesitan factos. So any professional news organization will have people that went to school for journalism. They have to interview people, they have to tell the truth, they have to back it up with research. Okay, so journalistas son profesionales para noticias. They also have fact checkers. If you guys ever watch CNN or any website or any, if you watch ESPN, at the end of the episode they have fact checkers that say, oh, we messed up here. You know, Patrick Mahomes only had four touchdowns instead of five. So they have experts, and that's their job, is to fact the research and find out if these things are true. All right, you're only writing down the bold words again. So you gotta make sure that the organization is trustworthy. They have editors, somebody who's in charge of the writers. They have fact checkers. And they have systems in place to catch, correct, and admit the mistakes when they're made. So they have a correction section. If you look at Sports Illustrated, they have a whole page for this. They say, hey, last issue we messed up. And it could be a couple of sentences to say, this is true, this is not true. So again, just the bold words, think about what I'm saying. And then as you do the research today, I want you to check these things on the websites. And then the last one is whether there are obvious conflicts of interest. Okay. So like Daisy said, BP Oil would not pay for advertisement on solar panels or windmills. They would not be paying for Wait. anything that says global warming is happening, right? So think about that. Conflicts of interest.
All right, so we're gonna use these today to decide if websites are trustworthy, if we should rely on them. So think about these things as we look. Some of you did a great job on your research and you found several good articles about your topic. Some of you need to step it up a little bit before your project is due because your project is 100% research based. And as I edit your website, edit, edit your Google slide presentation, I've seen a lot of quotes that are not quoted. And you gotta make sure you put the proper citation. So we're gonna work on that tomorrow after the PSAT and then Friday. All right, so today's skill is called lateral reading. Everybody needs to write this, the bold part. The best way to learn about who is behind a website or post is to read laterally. So laterally means sideways. Does anybody work out, lift weights? Does anybody know what your lats are? You ever do a lat pull down like this? Mm -hmm. What muscles is that focusing on when you pull down? Arm muscles. You're working on arm muscles, what else? Anybody know what your lats are? Lats. Lats. Lateral. Your lateral muscles. So laterally means to the side. It's your side muscles. Mm -hmm. So how do you read to the side online? What do you do? Hmm? Instead of reading vertically, vertically mm -hmm. means what? What is vertical? Vertical. Mm -hmm. Font? Up and down. Up and down. So usually we read vertically, right? Mm -hmm. We scroll yeah. down. Facebook. Sorry. We scroll down Facebook, right? We scroll down Instagram, Twitter. We're always reading down, right? <laughs> So instead of doing what you're used to doing, what, what seems natural, you're going to read sideways. And how do we do that? We're gonna open up new windows and we're gonna go outside the website, see what other sources say about it. Like I talked about, I'm the best basketball player in the school. You said you gotta to talk to people who played against me, right? Preferably in the years 2004, 2009. <laughs> when I was at my prime. All right, so we're gonna use that. Again, the objective is what, Daisy? Students will be able to. Students will be able to do lateral reading to evaluate where information comes from in order to decide if it's it trustworthy source. And what does evaluate mean? How do, what does that mean to evaluate someone or something? Anybody have an idea? What does evaluate mean? Like study that person? Kind of. If I'm in an interview with, an inter with a, a principal or a boss and they're trying to do what? How are they evaluating me? What are they doing? Asking they're asking me questions because they want what? Information. More information to make sure that I'm what? A good person to work for them. A good person to work for them. They're going to ask me if I have the right qualifications, experience. So they're basically, what's another word for that? To evaluate someone. Check. 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 Yeah. If you watch American Idol or whatever it's on American Voice, they're, they're judging people, right? So evaluate, you're judging, right? You're becoming an investigative journalist and you're judging the, per the person or you're judging the website. Tell me if it's trustworthy. All right, so where is the information coming from? It's coming from an important part. Or evaluating where it's coming from is an important part of deciding where it's, whether it's trustworthy. All right, so a couple things in your notes. We're going to look at this tweet. I'm going to model the skill for you. Um, just write down three things. First one is GOP. We haven't studied this yet, Marcos. GOP. So it's an abbreviation for Grand Old Party. And as the election comes up, in the third quarter, we're going to start learning about the election. So the GOP is the Republican Party. It's like a slang. It's a term. And it's not pronounced GOP or GOP. It's G-O-P. You say the letters. All right? And the symbol is an elephant. That's an elephant. El simbolo de los republicanos. Usually it's red. You guys can just put G-O-P equals Republican Party. If you want. And then you can put what it stands for if you want to be an expert. Okay? So GOP is Republican Party. Who is in charge of the Republican Party right now? Stephen? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. All right. And the Senate has a majority, so they can, they're in charge of the Senate. 
All right, next thing we, all, we should know is that Republicans tend to be against restricting gun ownership. So I write that down, think about it. This means that they are, they sh you should be able to own any gun, as many guns as you want, and the government cannot tell you how many guns you should own or which guns you should own. So they believe in the, what? which amendment tells us that you have the right to do that? First amendment. No, second. Second amendment. What does the second amendment say? Do you remember? Right to bear arms. The right to bear arms. You have the right to own guns, right? It was made in 1776. Why did they need guns back then? Defense. Defense against who specifically? Um, Sometimes, yes. But who was? Who were they fighting? Why were they fighting for independence? The British. The British. Good. So the British had the right. They had a law that said that the British could go in your house, take your food. And that was legal. Right? They could take your stuff if they needed it. All right, and the last one, we know that we had two walkouts, and that students across the country and the world have organized and participated in walkouts to protest gun violence in the schools. So if you participated in the first one back in 2017, and then we had another one last fall, we watched, we spent spent some time looking at that in civics class. So most of those students are what? Are they pro-gun or anti-gun? Anti gun. So they said that we need stricter what? Zoning. Stricter gun laws. Alright, so again, back to this tweet. How trustworthy is this tweet from your poster? You can flip your poster back over. I'm going to go through a model, an active model of the skill. And I'm going to talk about how you guys should do this. So pay close attention. Grace, Daniel. Pay close attention to what I do because you're going to answer these questions at the bottom of your poster. All right, at the bottom of your poster, there are four questions. Everybody see those? I'm going to ask on the other side. What did you notice me doing while I modeled? So think about that. What did you see me do, Evelyn? B, why was it important for me to look beyond Twitter itself to find out about the organization? And there's two more. Again, I'm going to open new browser tabs see what trusted websites say about the unknown source, and I'm going to read laterally. So lateral means side, sideways, and I'm going to open up your windows. Right. So I'm going to go get it. The paper's right up there. No. That's not what I'm here for. Go get the paper. All right, so first thing you do is you're going to go to the tweet itself, right? Um, since we cannot go on Twitter, I'm going to model it without going on Twitter. This says GOP teens. So we see an elephant, which is a symbol of the Republican, Republican Party. It's a, it's a little bit different. It's blue, red, white, and blue. And it has sunglasses, right? So it says at GOP teens, hashtag join the convo with your own hashtag GOP -E -E from GOPteens.com. So now I know that it is trying to sell me a t-shirt. All right, it has 65.7 thousand followers. Is that a lot? Mm. I don't know, I just have one on YouTube. It's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot? It's a decent amount. It's a decent amount, okay. Uh, I have a picture of a white kid, some fuzzy kids in the background. One kid maybe African American. There's a tiny bit of diversity, but probably not a lot. It says, team, do you agree that our country is hashtag Bay? <laughs> Best hashtag America ever. Uh, it talks about other things, Texas Tribune, which I can see are verified websites. Is this guy works? Is this one verified? No. 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 All right, so if I click on GOP Teams, I see a website I want to click on. I'm going to see what this is. All right, so I see that it is selling me products, t shirts, stickers. Is, o is hashtag Obama Voldemort? <laughs> Last chance to buy it. So he's comparing Obama to a the Harry Potter villain. Where should America's next war be? So I can see this is a these are Republican themed products. Do you agree that feminists need to chill out? So some of these are some are I would say they are inappropriate, not respectful of feminism. If I go to the bottom, I can see more about it. It says it's an accredited business. It has an A plus from the Better Business Bureau. 
So that's promising. I see that it has a Pinterest, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and Snapchat. It accepts basically every way you can pay. So I know that they are trying to get me to buy some crypto. All right, t-shirts. Now if I click on what is this, I try to find about us, which is a common way to find it. It tells me about who owns the company. So that was one of my questions, right? Who's paying for this? So it says, it's a company started in Oklahoma by a country board cartoonist, Jeffrey Rowland, who has been making internet comics since 1999. And it says he got fired from his job. So he talked with some of his internet cartoonist friends and said, hey, can I ship you, I can ship your things for you if you pay, if you pay me. So his friends gave him a shot, and it looks like it became successful selling, selling t-shirts and stuff by putting all their stuff on the website. All right. So it says it's in Massachusetts, and it talks about the books they sell. It says named after Topato Potato, this cartoon he made. That's an animated television series maybe. All right. Where does the money go? It says it goes back to other artists and cartoonists, and it supports their creative work. Contact info, who gets the cell phone. All right, so if I keep reading about this from this website, I know that I'm only going to get their perspective, right? So I need to go out. I'm going to open up a new window, press Control T. I'm going to go to Google, and I'm going to find out what this says about GOP team. All right, so we got the Atlantic, two parody Twitter accounts that perfectly explain U.S. politics, 2014. And it says that... It's fun to poke fun at each other on the internet about politics. So one of these is Republican, one of these is Democrat. And it says this is a the creator of GOP teams is Daniel Kibblesmith. He's an associate editor of Thickhole, a spin-off website from the Onion, which wrote a humor book. And it talks about this is a parody. What does that mean if it's a parody? It's a joke. It's a joke. So, so far, do I trust the Atlantic? No. no. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I'm going to look up the Atlantic. It's a joke. And say, is the Atlantic a reliable source? But how do I know it's a joke? The Atlantic could be a joke. So, if I go to one of those fact checker websites, Media Bias Fact Check, this will tell me if it's reliable. It says it's a little bit left of center bias. But it says factual reporting is high. So this is a website that I use, mediabiasfactcheck.com, and it's telling me that it's factual. So I know that the Atlantic is a trustworthy website, because I, I use it and I read it, but it's telling me that this GOP team is a joke. I can also go back and see their products, which tell me that they are selling t-shirts that have like a Republican bias. All right, so I want you to answer the questions that we talked about earlier. If I want to dig deeper, I can look up who Jeffrey Rowland is. I can look up the website owner, who pays for it. But I want you to answer those four questions first. All right, so what did you notice me doing while I modeled? Well, you were clicking and finding more information about um, what it was about. And... What else did I do after that? Yes, I checked it. Deshaun, I fact checked it? What does that mean? Make sure that my information was right. How did I do that? What a website. I had to open up another website, right? So I had to go outside of the main source to find out about it. If I just stayed on here, what would happen if I stayed on Twitter? There would have been enough information. No what? There would have been enough information for me to read it. So why is there not enough inf information? Because I know how you don't know what I don't, right? So if I stay on the website, obviously I'm only gonna get their view. All right, so based on what you guys did at the beginning of class, what do you think? Is this similar to what you guys did? Do you guys have any similar thoughts? Was it similar or different? Based on what you did when you first started class, I'm gonna know. Is that similar to what you guys did? Yeah, it's similar. How so? Raise your hand if you said this was trustworthy or untrustworthy. Tell me what you thought of the game. Raise your hand if you thought this was a trustworthy source. You trusted it. Raise your hand if you thought it was not trustworthy. 
We got more untrusted. All right, so the part D, why is lateral reading necessary for finding out more about who is behind information? Why do I need to go to other websites? Darren? Evelyn? Why do you think I need to go to other websites to find out who is behind the information on GOP team? Evelyn? Sarita? What do you think? Why do I need to go to other... Why don't you use lateral reading and open up side thing? So yeah, I gotta find out who's behind it. So how do I do that? Why do I have to go outside of that website to find out? You gotta go outside. You gotta like who he said, she said. If I ask one person, I'm only gonna get their advice. Huh? It's a different perspective. It's a different perspective. All right, so it's a little rough. I'm gonna try to um, show you a quick part of the video to help you understand a little bit better. Um, during the video, in your notes, I'd like you to write down that T chart. So on the left. Write down pros. What are the good things? What are the pros of reading laterally? On the left, on the izquierda. Pros, based on white else, what is good about reading laterally? And then on the right, cons, about reading vertically. So again, we said vertically means what? Up and down. Up and down. And then laterally means what? Sideways. Sideways, good. So if you know Spanish, how do you say side to the side? Lado. Lado. So lado, you say to the side is a lado. Lado is very similar to lateral. Oh. La, lat. So think about your lats are your side muscles. When you do your lat pull down, you're building those side muscles. It's part of your back, it's part of your arms. So tell me, what are the good things about reading laterally? Why do, why do we open up other websites? And what are the bad things about reading vertically? And this is a skill you guys really need to practice very important in high school and college. You're going to use this a lot. It's going to save you a lot of time. Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to Crash Course Navigating Digital Information. So today we are going to learn one of the most important skills of 21st century life. And I don't say that lightly. So you know my name and that this is an episode of Crash Course. But there's a lot that doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell you, for instance, that Crash Course is a product of Complexly, a company owned by my brother and me and funded partly by support from Patreon, partly by advertisers, and partly by grants from organizations. It also doesn't tell you who works on the show, a large team of producers, editors, writers, illustrators, and more. You're looking at some of them now. And as I mentioned in previous videos, the folks at MediaWise also helped us make this video. MediaWise was created with support from Google, and it's a collaboration between the Pointer Institute, the nonprofit journalism school, and the Stanford History Education Group, a university-based research group. All of this is helpful to know when navigating digital information, because understanding where information came from helps us to understand if it's reliable. How do you even find a source in a world where no one has to cite sources and what citations do exist are perpetually disappearing? Well, to quote my friends Rhett and Link, let's talk about that. <laughs> So information does not just appear, even if it's automated or driven by an algorithm. A Twitter bot, for instance, is not a person, but they were created by people, as are the algorithms that declare what topics are trending in online discourse. So all information is produced by someone, but it's also produced for a purpose, like newspapers are created by journalists and editors to inform the public about things editors think they should know. But of course, they also have to sell subscriptions and advertisements to support themselves. Advertisements are created by companies to convince customers to buy or use their products. Movies and books are created to entertain or to stir up important cultural conversations, or both. 
The lines between these motives, of course, are not always clear. Advertisements often feel informative and sometimes seek to be informative, like those medicine ads that list 143 side effects in 10 seconds because they are required to do so by law. And while journalism should seek to inform, journalists are humans and they make choices both about what to cover and how to cover it, choices we may not agree with. Movies and books may exist to entertain and enlighten, but they can also exist to sell things. It's no coincidence, for instance, that every Everyone in the Fault in Our Stars movie uses Apple products. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is, who made this and why? And we mustn't oversimplify those answers. Like, I wrote The Fault in Our Stars because I was inspired by my friend Esther, and also because I wanted to explore whether a short life can be a full life, and also because I thought people would read it and pay for it. The book was also a product of my editor and Penguin Random House, my publisher. They also thought people would read it and buy it. None of those motivations negates any of the others. But of course, under Understanding who is actually behind a project can be really difficult, especially online. I mean, catfishing is now a verb because it's so easy to pretend to be what you're not. The Stop City Funded Internet Campaign is a good example of what I mean. So in early 2018, the city of West Plains, Missouri was working on a taxpayer-funded municipal internet service project. If successful, it would provide residents with cheaper high-speed internet. And while the city was working on this plan, a website for the Stop City Funded Internet Campaign popped up. It claimed to be a grassroots community of local fiscal conservatives against the plan. The campaign site looked pretty sleek and professionally designed. It had a clear stated mission and high quality photography. Oh, and also a list of all the ways that municipal internet service projects have failed. And just by looking at the website, you would not be able to tell who was really behind that campaign because it didn't name names or list its leadership. But in the end, someone did discover the brains behind the operation. It was, of course, Fidelity Communications, a local commercial internet provider that didn't want to lose customers. And the only reason they came clean was because a Missouri man noticed the file name of the site's logo had Fidelity in it. But most of the time, we don't need to search source code to know more about who's sharing the information that we're consuming. We just need to learn to read differently. So we tend to read websites like we read books or articles. We start at the top of the page, look at the title, and scroll down from there. We read vertically. And many websites look legitimate when you're reading vertically because you're only seeing what their creators want you to see. And creators know what we think makes websites look authoritative. A well-designed logo, references and citations, professional photography, no grammatical errors or typos. And so when you read vertically, it is often impossible to distinguish reliable information from unreliable. But introducing other strategies into your reading, like looking elsewhere for additional information, can help you find out a lot more. When you're on a new website, instead of staying put and taking their word for it, you should just leave. leave. Open a new tab and start looking for more information. That's called lateral reading. It's lateral because instead of moving up and down, you're moving from tab to tab. Basically, what I'm saying is that when your browser looks like this, it, it can actually be good news. So this is an important point, right? If you're trying to evaluate a website, what's the first thing you do? You leave it, thank you. So a lot of times you need to, people see a lot of windows open, you say that's bad, right? It's not good for the computer. But this is the best way to find out about a website, if it's legit. So you have to go outside the website immediately. Don't even waste time looking at the Adopt Us, because we know the Adopt Us is gonna say that it's legit, right? We have to find out other references. We have to go outside, afuera is that when your browser looks like this, it, it can actually be good news. Like here's a website from the American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC. This page from 2018 is about a back and forth in the federal government over regulating internet service providers like Comcast, Verizon, and AT&T. Regulating those providers could include setting the prices and rates for their services or whether they're allowed to collect tolls from websites or content creators, among other things. Apparently, ALEC is against government regulation of internet service providers. So we want to know who ALEC is. We can tell a few things by looking at their website, namely that this site is apparently not run by Haley Baldwin's famous uncle. Also, the site has a .org web address, which is often used by nonprofits. And the logo looks... So that's an important thing to write down, a .org. What does .org stand for? Organization. Organization. So what do we know about .org? Anything? Do we trust .org? No. We don't know, but... 
It does mean organization, which means it's a not for profit. So what does that mean, not for profit? It's a non profit. What does that mean? They're not receiving any money for what they're doing. Yeah, they're not receiving any money. They're not trying to make money. So a dot org website is a not for profit website. <coughs> it's important for you to know that. It means there's no there's no money really. Usually these are okay, sometimes they're educational. But sometimes we don't know who's behind it, right, Stephen? We don't know who's paying for it. It could be a it could be a trick. So this is a good example of one that's a trick. I'm gonna skip a little bit ahead. It's probably a good idea to copy down dot org equals not for profit. And authors, they may not be perfect, but they're a good starting point if you're just trying to learn a little bit about a source of information. Let's go to the thought bubble. Newspapers can be a good place to start. So who do we trust? This is a good question. We trust newspapers? Like what? Which newspapers exist in Chicago? Chicago, Chicago Tribune. I used to work for the Chicago Tribune on the sports page. It's been here for hundreds of years, 100 years or more. So we trust it. They have fact checkers. They, their job is to be truthful. Right, some of them have been around for decades or even centuries. They have tons of information. Traditionally, newspapers provided written information about current events printed daily or weekly. Today, many newspapers have turned into digital media companies that publish news online daily in a variety of formats. Some focus on international or national news and others focus on local news. What other, what, what other newspapers do we trust? Nationally or... Besides the Chicago Tribune, we do trust it. What do your magazines come from? Your Scholastic. Who makes those? Or what other newspapers have you heard of? Uh, New York Times. New York Times, good. They're the one that makes your, your magazine. The New York Times has been around for 200 years. It's, it's a very factual, highly respected source of information. What are we saying, Grace? Yeah, we can use books. All right, next one is magazines. So I write down the ones that we trust. We trust newspapers, like New York Times, Chicago Tribune. We trust magazines. Magazines and digital news sites are useful for lateral reading too. However, it's important to note that many online news organizations have their own point of view. Sometimes these are explicit liberal or conservative political leanings, but sometimes they're much harder to pinpoint, like a mashup of their contributors' own interests and perspectives. Like a website written specifically about comics for and by women might cover the new Captain Marvel trailer differently than a site with all male writers would, for instance. We'll talk more about authority. You have to be careful about perspective bias, right? If somebody works for Marvel, they're going to say good things about Marvel. They're going to say bad things about DC perspective in our next episode. Fact-checking websites can also be an excellent resource. Sites like Snopes.com and Politifact.com are well-respected fact-checking sites. This is the last thing I'm going to show you, so this is a real good shortcut too. A fact-checking website like Snopes.com is an easy way to find out if a website is factual, biased, and reliable. Alright, I'm going to write down one more that is helpful. Snopes is a good way to find claims. So if it says, if you type in Mark Wiley is the best basketball player ever, it's going to tell you if this is a bogus claim. Hopefully if it's been on the internet. So the other one is media bias fact check. And I highly recommend you doing this today. So media bias fact check .com. So, okay. so, so anything you type in there seems is true for the company. Not always. So it depends if it's, if it's been shared on the internet a lot. So if I type this Kim Kardashian's butt real, it might pop up? Yes, that would probably come up because it's widely published on the internet. So it have to be something that is like out there on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, <laughs> stuff like that. But Mark Wiley being the best basketball player would probably be on there. All right, so use these websites to check if they are factual. All right, so now what you're going to do is I passed out two sheets with your group. During the we do, you're going to answer four questions. You all need to get a laptop. And before you get a laptop, you're gonna answer number one together. I'm gonna to give you two minutes to answer number one. It says, what is the name of the Twitter account? So you're gonna look at the picture, um, and tell me what is the name that should be easy, find the name. Who's got thought of number? Yes, you are all writing on this. This is the We Do group portion. And then second, once you guys find the name, tell me if you know anything about this source already. So what is the name of the Twitter account? 
Lois Beckett. Do you know anything about Lois Beckett? No. no. So you can write down no. I do not know anything about Lois Beckett. Um, number two. Number two, three, and four is what you're doing with the group. So you're going to write down what can you learn about the person behind the Twitter account? So what are you going to do when you get your laptops? You look up what? Yes. All right. So grab, grab your laptops, group uh, one and group two. So Antonio, Sarita, Amanda, group. You guys can grab your laptops. Some of your numbers are on top of the laptop there. You guys want to log into Google and immediately start answering number two, three, and four. I'm going to assign numbers to each person in your group. To Shara. So Vanessa, you're going to share four. Larry, you're going to share one with me. And Juan, you're going to share one with you. So circle those letters. When I come on your group, you are responsible for those. Daisy, you're in charge of your story on top of the chart. No, I can't do it. Daisy, you're in charge of your story on top of the chart. Alexis, you're in charge of your story on top of the chart. Caesar, you're in charge of number two. Circle number two, Xavier number three, yeah. race number four. Okay. Alright, next two groups, Byron group and Edwin group, you guys can grab your laptop. So quickly log in. I'm gonna describe the timer once everybody has a laptop. You're gonna have 15 minutes. Somebody took my number, Mr. Wiley. Oh, yeah, they did. Oh. Mr. Wiley. Yes. 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 Y
Is it for your YouTube channel? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get What's my follower right now. Yeah, this one's here. What's your YouTube channel? Yours great. Well, you guys are working together. It's just so we need to share a different one. Yeah. All right, everybody has a laptop starting time in 15 minutes. Hey, guys. Welcome back to my channel. It's not mejorando. It's la habilidad de usar muchos puentes para averiguar, para evaluar. Este es la importancia. Pero él ha puesto cómo puedes hacerlo. Okay. Entonces, contestando uno, dos, tres y cuatro, va a dar la respuesta naturalmente si es buena fuente. Bueno, bueno. ¿Tiene sentido? ¿Ya? So, all you have to do, la única cosa que tiene que hacer es trabajar juntos para contestar uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Esta no es una pregunta. Esta es el... Esa no es una pregunta tampoco. Esta es una pregunta. Eso es lo mismo que esto. Cuando busca eso, eso va a aparecer. Puedes hacer eso, pero también tienes la información. Pero es buena idea poner eso. Pueden empezar poniendo eso. I mean, you understand Spanish, right? Yes. Okay. No se puede buscar eso porque es Twitter. Y CPS no te deja. Yeah, I know. I messed up. I told them the wrong thing. <laughs> Sorry. I apologize. So all, my time. Well, you, all you have to do is answer the question. So, number one, what is the name of the Twitter? Edwin ya tiene la respuesta. Puede ayudarles. Edwin sabes. ¿Cuál es el nombre de tu Por eso hay que trabajar. 
Okay? But when you are here, so you write that down for number two. What can you learn sense? about the person who has a Sure. You know there's a team. Decide what you learn. Okay. And it looks like Daisy already has it in her so you guys know that you're all doing the whole board, right? And you're working together. So let's sit down and see if we're So let's have a decent one. Yeah, because if you don't if you don't do number two, then you'll try to do number three. Senior reporter covering the Bible the policy from a distance. That's the one that you're sharing in the class. Now we're from where that's why I mean, you can't do this without this. Yeah, so you're all doing all of them. Yeah. We're saying the same thing. Uh-huh. Number three. Sí, estás diciendo. ¿Qué estás diciendo? Salieron de escuela. Silencio. Eso es todo. Eso es lo que dice. Okay. Elementary school water outage in Más que 65 estudiantes y son completamente silenciosos. Mira, eso es un caso. No, 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 Entonces dijeron, no es para que no hay no, 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 nada de ella. Ahora tienen que buscar otra fuente de información para encontrar más información. Pueden trabajar juntos, pero deben buscar Lois Becker ahí, pero también ella tiene información. No, Asegura que no cierra una ventana que tiene la información de cómo se llama el puente con el otro Did you figure out what she does? Right? Mm-hmm. So you got two different companies that you work for. So now what are you going to do once you find out? We can let your group in on it. Quién tiene el número dos? Who's going to share number two? Yeah, but I think you're number two right now. To share, para el propio. Fue Adriana. Okay, entonces asegura que te gusta tu respuesta. Make sure you like your answer. 
Make sure you listen so to she's Hanny's a reporter. Like That's correct. Yeah, you know, did you figure out from where? You know what she writes about. I just want to know. She didn't know what to say. We'll say she's a reporter. She's a reporter. The Guardian. You found it. Make sure Adriana has it because she's sharing that one. I mean, everybody should have it. But. We chose the Guardian. What is the on that? The Guardian of Source. Yama, the Guardian. What was Becky? Because it shows a brief summary of the story. So she focuses on gun violence. And all of her. So we stopped. We got the same thing about that. All of her comments from October 29th. So if you guys are writing about gun violence, January 24th, January 24th. And then who's number three? Natalie, you're number three? Make sure you write down where you found that. Thank you. Sources to do that. You guys good? You guys have the same handwriting? Make sure you share that with us. That's part of it, but also you know, what sources did you use? Which sources did you use to find them? Because I didn't see this on the TV. It's the paint. So make sure you share that. All right, so since Sean helped you answer number three. It's the paint. See, this one is the Guardian.com. That's one point there, one source. <laughs> Thank you. Xavion just said the same thing as me. Bilingual, he must be. Right, Grace? Yeah. So if you're in the center, then you can over here. Why don't you look for some more sources? Okay, he's in the show. No, it's not Sadie on the password. She's sharing it. That doesn't mean he's the only one. There's one that says. Good job, ProPublica. That is where she wrote. You didn't know how to say that? You don't have to say it. Yeah, you can just ProPublica. I got about two more minutes. Dos minutos. Based on what you found so far, you need to answer number four. Do we think it's trustworthy? Two minutes. Should we finish it up? Just tell us something you already know. So let me see how much you got that. What do you think? What do we have? Okay. Pero puedes buscar un momento sitio para no checar los 
If you think she's a reliable source, Chris, you're going to stand by for the door. So if you definitely trust this source, please stand by the door. Tienes confianza en Lois Beckett? Levántase. So please stand up. If you think she's somewhat reliable, you're towards the middle. If you think she's not reliable at all, you're going to stand right there on the, by the computer card. If you're not sure, that's okay. No sabes. Good that you can admit it, no sabes, you can stand over there. So we're going to make a spectrum of reliability. Everybody needs to participate 100%. Okay, bye. Rise. You got to stand up? We're trying to see where you guys stand. If you think you trust her 100% over there, somewhat reliable. Not at all reliable. No sabes. Not sure. Where are you going to go? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, come here. Where's this thing? All right, so we got a wide spectrum of opinions. Listening up. Escuchen. So most people think that it's reliable. Can we have one person to share out? Why do you think it's reliable? Well, I think that it's reliable because it's not going to be Or anybody. I'll I'd like to hear from somebody new. Can I hear from Daniel? Uh, Why do you think it's reliable? I searched her up on a website called uh, the, Guard the Guardian. Yeah. The Guardian? What did that tell you? It told me it was reliable. It's reliable. Why? How do you know it's reliable? Where did you look? Uh, Some of you looked it up. Zyron. On, on this website. Zyron. Thank you, Dan. All right, here. I have searched it up, and uh, I have found it on uh, commondream.org, and um, it was uh, somewhat. I ain't get enough info, and then I use your website, the tutorial we can use. Which one is that? The one up there. What is it? Media Bias Fact Check? Yeah. And what did it say? Uh, it didn't pop up, so. Who else used media bias fact check and what did pop up? Antonio. What popped up? What did you look up? On um, uh, media bias fact check. I searched up the Guardian and it It was incredible. What were the actual words? Juan, did you see it? Is that the same thing you were going to say? No. It said it was highly factual, right? All right. Anybody over here, tell me why you're not sure? Okay. So that was a reliable source. She's a. She's a professional journalist, and she's an expert on what? Gun violence, gun control, and... Good, gun violence, gun control. All right, so come back to your seats. You're going to have about seven minutes to do the YouTube, which is, uh, you're going to skip. You're only going to look at it, and you're going to answer number four. You're only answering number four. <laughs> this is independent, independiente. You are working independently to answer number four. Oh, I gave you a new sheet that says, got a picture of Donald Trump. Everybody find that sheet, write your name on it. It's going to be made to go back. Call Donald Trump. You're going to spend six minutes. I know it's fast. And you're going to look at the, this was shared on, on social media thousands of times. It went viral. 
And I shared it myself, I'll admit. And there are several sources listed on there. So I want you to do this independently without your group, sin grupo, and try to come up with a quick conclusion. Do you trust it? And how are you going to do that? Yes. You're going to use lateral movement. At the end of the rubric, you will use the grade. Cinco minutos. You're not going to have time to answer the whole sheet. You're only going to answer number four. Okay, let's go. You only have six minutes. Let's go. So you're writing down what this is. And this is independent. Independent. Yay. I can't. It's okay. We only have a few women. Take care of yourself. You're trying to do this yourself. You need to do this. It's not just like a conclusion. you got to use lateral reading. you got to use your laptops. Who's on Sue's computer? I have to look at this. You guys can share. Two seconds. Look at the question. You okay, Hassan? We don't have a ton of time. You guys have to reform? No. 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 So real quick, you got five minutes. You need to use your computer. And use lateral reading to figure it out. People Magazine, 1998. Think about the quote. Look around the picture, too. Use everything you can do in lateral reading. Spend some time opening multiple windows. If you didn't do that, you're not going to find a conclusion. Open a new window, what are you going to do? Look up your source. 
Hagamos pasos, ok. Entonces, primero, ¿cuáles son los This is a fact checker. So you can use a fact checker? How would you use a fact checker? This is a fact checker. You gotta do it. Oh, okay. You're not doing that. Yeah. You can use any of the ones I recommend. Media advice, fact checks, or you can. What we going to do with the fact checks? Can I check the whole thing? Good. Can I do it? Just like you're typing in the dining question and the topic. You can do it. Typing the whole thing. All right. Make sure your name's on that. We didn't have enough time with fish. Tomorrow we have time. Are they just turning around? After PSAT, you do it in my class, 8th period. You're gonna put, turn in the turn-in box for you, make sure your name's on it. Turn in the we-do and the you-do's. Okay, cool. 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 Okay, Just because, like, all the stuff that I do up front, I should have just. I, mean, I can't, like, skip it. Yeah, it feels fine. She was what? Like what? what? Like what? People's heads banging down those. Yeah, I went around reminding them, they just still, still do it. <clears throat> it's the same kids. Participate well. Yeah. I, mean, I, I guess I should have just focused on the first one and talked about it more. Have people share out. Like, what was going to happen? Oh, wow, you guys are still here? Thought you graduated early. Thought you guys graduated early. Never see you anymore. I thought you left. Wow. Yeah, you don't stand outside your door anymore. I do. It smells like. That's me. Bro, can you tell my pencil? Like, you're going to do a couple of things. Hey, you got a magical to do the announcements. 